Hello, welcome back to Spoilt Rotten Beads. I am Juliet, and today I'm going to show you a lovely Christmassy project. It is this fantastic bead embroidery, bead soup, as we're calling it, ball ball, um, which is a brilliant way to use up all those odds and ends from your bead stash if you've got them. But we do sell it as a kit over on the Spoilt Rotten Beads website, complete with the backing that you need the seed beads to go around the outside of your piece and even the little satin cord to hang your finished ball ball from your Christmas tree. So I'm going to show you how to make the edging with the seed beads, how to cut out your bead backing so that you get a nice shape and how to attach your beads to your bead embroidery backing so that you get um, a lovely finished design, which I just think is really, really pretty, very festive and um, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. It's really nice and easy as well. So I'm going to guide you through every step of the way, show you how to get started. Um, there is a lovely kit available on the website and I will pop a link to that on this video as well. And we also sell the bead soup that we've used here um, in separate packs as well. So um, I'll make sure that that is on the link too. So just stick with me and I'm going to show you how to get started to make your bead embroidery bauble. So this is the lovely bead soup bauble that I'm going to show you how to make today. It's a nice and easy project, so if you've not done any bead embroidery before, then this is a good place to start. Um, I'm going to take you through um, how to use the um, bead embroidery backing, um, the bead soup, um, the edging, so how to create this lovely edge of the seed beads around the outside of the piece, and finally just how to stitch on your little hanging loop here in the satin cord. Now you may already have um, some beads that you want to do this with, um, um, but if you haven't, then we've got this as a limited edition kit over on the Spoil Rotten Beads website. So do head over to the site and, and pick up one of those kits. It includes your bead embroidery backing, your bead soup, your seed beads to go around the outside of your bauble and also the satin cord for the hanging loop. And the kit includes a lovely um, template that you can cut out and use to draw the bauble onto the back bead backing. So I'm just going to clear my um, space, my working space here, and get my bead embroidery backing into, into shot. So the first thing you'll need to do is to draw your ball ball onto your bead embroidery backing using um, the template in our kit, um, or you may just want to draw your ball ball freehand. It's entirely up to you. So the first thing you need to do is to draw that ball ball, which I'm just gonna do and come back to you when I have done. So I've drawn the rough outline there of my ball ball. And at this stage, if you want to, you can just leave it like it is and you'll be able to bead straight, um, cut it out and then bead straight onto it. But what you may want to do is just use a Sharpie marker pen um, or some fabric paint to colour the inside of your bauble so that when you add your beads on, you don't get the white backing showing through. So on our demo piece here, we actually didn't colour in because we wanted to photograph the process and it was easier to photograph the process without colouring in the backing. So you can see little bits of white bead backing kind of peeking through every once in a while. I don't think it's a problem actually, um, but if you want to um, if you want to stop that, then you can colour in the back of your um, of your bauble, any colour you like really, um, or you might want to use a spray paint or a fabric paint, but a Sharpie pen is brilliant for this. So once you have done that, um, then you can cut out your piece. So I'm just going to cut out my shape and then I'm going to come back to you when I have done that. So for this video, I've left my bauble white because you're going to find it easier to follow me if I bead with a black thread on a white background. But as I say, you may want to colour in your bauble yourself. So once you've got your shape ready, you just need to measure off a length of your beading thread and you can use any thread you like for this. So you could use Dura thread, you can use Fireline, you can use Nymo. It's really up to you what thread you want to use. Just, you're gonna need to kind of add more thread as you go along. So just work with a thread length that you are happy with. And you just want to thread your needle and just make a few stitches on the edge of your bead backing one on top of the other just to anchor your thread to the base it's just 
stitch a couple of times on top of the same place just to anchor the, the thread in place just close to the edge there of your backing once you've done that a couple of times you'll find it's nice and secure and it's not going to come off and then we're ready to start adding the beads to the outside of the piece to create that outline along the edge of the piece and I find it best to do this before you start adding the rest of the beads on because otherwise the, other, the beads can get in the way and you can kind of end up with a little bit of a wonky line so doing it at this stage I think is the best thing to do. So the first thing to do is to pick up two of your seed beads for the outside of your piece and I'm using size eight seed beads for this and I'm just going to stitch through the bead backing close to the edge with those two beads added on and then go back up through that second bead that I added and just pull my needle through. I've just managed to get my thread tangled under my pen, but there you go. Okay, pull the needle through that bead and those are the first two beads added onto my base. So I'm now going to pick up just one bead each time and stitch through the edge of the backing and up through the bead that I just added and pull it into place. So you end up with a line of thread going along the top of each bead. So pick up a bead, stitch through the backing, and then thread up through the bead that you just added. Up through that bead that you just added there. And pull it into place. So you want to continue around the outside of the piece adding in those seed beads and you can see how I'm kind of just eyeballing where my next stitch is going to be so that I make sure that the next bead sits nice and close to the one before so that you get a nice neat line of beads all around the outside of your piece so you just want to keep doing that now just keep beading all the way around um, and then, once I've done that, we'll be ready to fill in the top of the bauble there with a little, um, with some little kind of, uh, more, with some more of those size 8 seed beads. And then we're ready to start embroidering the rest of the piece. So I'm just going to continue around my piece now and come back to you when I'm ready to fill in the top of my bauble there. So once you get all the way around, you'll need to add your last bead on and anchor that this last bead to this very first bead that you added right at the beginning. So I'm just adding the last bead on in exactly the same way as we have done all the way around, going up through the bead. And then you anchor it to the first bead by stitching down through the first bead and then through the beading foundation again and then that bead is now anchored to the first bead and um, nice and secure. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill in the top here with some seed beads so I'm just going to kind of tack my thread across into the top of the bauble there and I'm just going to pick up maybe two maybe three beads at once and I want to create kind of a little bit of a, a random effect here, like I have done here, um, by stitching them, kind of just picking up three at a time and then just kind of stitching down through the bead embroidery so that they kind of sit on top of one another, like so. And you can do that a few times. So just stitch through the bead embroidery, pick up two or three of your seed beads and then just stitch back down through the bead embroidery again and you can see how they kind of build up and you just want to fill in that whoopsie managed to pick up my scoop there um fill in 
that space with seed beads because you want it to look like the top of a Christmas ball ball which is where it's usually made of metal so I'm just picking up a few beads at a time not following any particular pattern and just filling in this space here with seed beads so um, I'm going to carry on like this come back to you when I have filled in the top of my ball ball with my seed beads and then just talk you through how to attach your rest of your beads, your bead soup, to fill in your ball ball with and with all your random beads there. I'm just going to show you um, some examples of how to attach two whole beads like the skinko bead here and just the single whole beads as well so that you can kind of get an idea of how to continue with that. Um, so I'm going to come back to you when I have filled in this top of this ball ball with my seed beads. Okay so I've filled in the top of my ball ball now and I'm ready to start filling in the rest of the ball ball with the bead soup. So I'm just going to kind of thread my needle through to the front here so that I'm ready to put on my first bead. And you just really want to do this in a kind of just very random way. So uh, I'm just going to pick up a bead. Uh, this just happens to be a seed bead. I'm going to bring it down to my um, to my bead embroidery, my backing, and I'm going to position it with my finger where I want it to sit because that tells me where to stitch through onto the backing so that that bead stitch sits in that same place that I've just positioned it. So if I pull now, you see the bead falls into place. And you can see how it's easier for you to follow me probably without having coloured in my my backing but if i had colored in my backing then that obviously stops um any gaps from showing as you um as you add the beads in so uh, this is a little pearl i'm gonna position it with hold it in place with my thumb and forefinger and then i can stitch down through my backing and when i pull my thread tight that bead sits in place and you want to get your beads nice and close together. So I'm just going to get my needle to kind of just come out just between these two beads here and add another bead on. So this time I think I might add a two hole bead so that you can see how that works. So let me have a little look. Look, Here is um, a little Papuka bead here. So I'm just going to, it's got two holes. Make sure both holes are free actually. There they are. It's got two holes. I'm just going to thread through one of them and again kind of push this into place where I want it to sit I want it to be there so I can now stitch down through my backing and that's one of the holes attached and then I can stitch up through the backing next to the other hole through the through the other hole and down through the backing to anchor that bead in place. Um, and then just again, stitch up through the backing and I'm ready for my next bead there. So um, it's really hard not to follow a pattern sometimes, isn't it? When you do these things, you have to just kind of not think about it too much. Just pick up a bead, Push it into place with your thumb and forefinger, hold it in place and stitch down through the backing to anchor that bead into the spot you wanted it to sit in. And that is all there is to it. That is all there is to it. So if I look, pick up another two hole bead. This is a super duo now. So these holes are on the front of the piece. I'm going to push it into place. I'd like it to sit right up close there, I think. And I'm going to stitch down through my backing and then back up through the backing and through the other hole in this super duro bead. Just give it a little push to push it back into place and then down through the backing again. 
So I'm really, I'm really trying not to think about my placement of beads because I do think you get a better result if you keep it nice and random. So I'm just going to continue adding in beads now. I've got some, I think I've got some bugle beads in my mix. So if I pick up one of these guys, like a bugles, if you've not used them before, are like a tube shaped bead. Again, they work really nicely with this. You can really use anything you like. Just push it into place, sort of tuck it in where you want it to sit, and then just go back down through the backing again. Simple as that. Just keep on adding in those beads, filling in your bauble until you're happy with the result. And you can see I've just used totally random mixes of beads here. Put anything I want onto it. And as you do that, you'll find that the back of your, your, your stitches will show on the back of your bauble. Um, I'm using black thread here because it shows up easier for the video. But when I made this one, I used white thread so it's not so easy to see. But once you've beaded your whole piece, at that stage, what you can do is stitch your satin cord onto the back here. So just to tie a little knot, make yourself a, a loop and then stitch that knot onto the back of your piece. And at that stage, you could, there's lots of different ways you could finish the back of these. You might just leave it as it is. You may choose to spray or paint the back of your piece to cover up your stitching. You may want to glue some felt or stitch some felt or Christmassy fabric onto the back of your ball ball. You may colour it in with a marker pen or you may want to just bead the other side. Um, that might be a bit more tricky because you'll have to make sure that you can get your thread in between all of the beads on the front um, or you could make two and you can glue them together to make a double-sided bauble if you wanted to um, so there's a few different options for how you finish your baubles there i hope that that gives you all the information that you need in order to enjoy making one of these as i say there are some kits over on the spoiled rotten beads website we also sell the bead embroidery backing separately too so if you've got some sort of mixed beads in your stash that you want to have a go with then you can pick up some bead embroidery backing um, from our website it's great stuff because it doesn't Unlike felt or something, it, it holds its shape once you've added the beads to it. As you can see with this one here, it's got a lot of beads on it, but it still remained flat. If you used a regular piece of felt, it would just pucker and, um, and distort and you wouldn't end up with that nice solid shape that we've got here. So if you've got any questions, please leave them in the comments below because I really do like to see, to um, do my best to answer them for you. Um, and do head over to our Facebook page and share pictures of your makes as well because it's really lovely to see what you're all up to as well. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.